Hello! Welcome to Unscripted Gaming. My name is Mike. It's my week to intro the podcast. So, that's how we're doing it here today. It's big responsibility. As always, I am joined by my co-host, Ray and Josh. Fellas, how are we doing? Well. Fantastic. fan freaking it's, it's a You know, it's a great week to be a gamer. It's a great week to be a gamer. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great week to be a gamer, because... I mean, it's a, yeah. it's, a great, it's a great week. It's not a great week to be a lot of other things, but no. yeah, it's a great week it's to be like a gamer. Most other things, it's not a great week. It's okay. It's okay. So, you know, I got to find my positivity where I can, you know? Exactly. Crazy times. You know, Let's you can't. Let's get the bad stuff out of the way first. <laughs> uh, wait a second. What? Let's, Let's get... just. No, no, I want to get the bad Let's... stuff out of the way first. Uh,. Did you guys watch that Ubisoft Elite Squad trailer? <laughs> I did not, but the premise I, sounds very, uh, very Tom Clancy, but like extra Tom Clancy. Did, so they, they, did they turn the clan style up just like? Yeah. <laughs> there are reasons why Ubisoft actually did apologize publicly and take this trailer down. Um, so. Uh, ju just to get it out of the way, I, I do have some colleagues that work at Ubisoft, not on this game. Actually, everyone I know at Ubisoft is working on Far the next Far Cry, Far Cry 6 or whatever, and they're super excited for that. Guys, it's, it's good. It looks okay. It looks great. Might pick it up. Um, But in the Elite Squad trailer, they make it very, very clear that uh, the reason why you're rising up against this tyranny is being caused by civil unrest and protests and a secret government shadow organization named, uh -huh. and I'm, I'm not making this up, Umbra, make it that what you will, and there's a uh -huh. bunch of rised fist pow uh, uh, symbology coming up in the background on TV uh -huh. screens. And the purpose of the Elite Squad is to put them down. And you're like, what uh -huh. the fuck, you piece of... Oh, th wow, so this game does sound pretty realistic. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you know, know you kinda, correct, you appreciate the honesty, correct me yeah. if I'm wrong, but Umbra is used in other languages to designate the color black. Am I, am I, am I correct? 100% of what that <laughs> means. It, it's very clear, like, Black Lives Matter symbology, and it's very clear... That, that you're fighting against a shadow organization that Black Lives Matter is causing like a secret civil unrest while the shadow organization comes up out of nowhere. And um It's like you're, be... it's like you're it sounds like you're fighting in this game hypothetically you, hypothetically you would be fighting what Fox News thinks Black Lives Matter is. Yes, yeah. or what Antifa is. Now, to be fair to the development team of Elite Squad they had no idea their marketing team was going to do this. Like, when you actually oh, yeah. see yeah, what the yeah, video right. game is, it's just like, it's like the, the it's like the Smash yeah, Brothers like, version. Oh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a uh, jewel puzzle. Uh, you, you connect three of the little pieces together and you clear a row. And, and then you, get, you can set up combos. It's just a, it's just a mobile game. A mobile, like, squad-based game. And you're taking, like, a Smash Brothers roster of, like, Tom Clancy characters. Like, Sam Fisher is in it. You can pick him as a character. And it's got very, like, mobile video game-style graphics. Like, very inoffensive Team Fortress 2-looking graphics. And then their marketing team does this. Oh, little... yeah. Didn't, that, dev... didn't they show a trailer for that earlier this year? They did. Yeah. And then their marketing team did this. And the devs are like, we had... No idea they were going to do this. Oh I my god! No. This is okay, gonna be like Ubisoft. Was Fortnite. this was this an internal Ubisoft marketing team, or did you know did they hire a firm to do this? Um, do we do we do we know that? It's bad either way, but it just. Yeah. So, did sign off on this. Yeah, like, somebody a, a room, somewhere. A room full of people said, "Yeah, this seems all right." Like, I, I cannot be, I just, it's, it's one of those things where like, and it's just, uh, the yes ending obviously got out of control in that room, but it's just like, how could there not have been one person who just like rose their hand and be like, um, so yeah, any y'all motherfuckers yeah. watched the news recently? Like, 
I'm going to combat you on this, Josh, having sat on some marketing teams. Everyone in the room knew what they were doing, but the fact that we're talking about it is what they wanted. Yeah. There probably was one person that, at least one, that was probably sickened to their core, and they said, I'm going to write an email to let you guys know I wash my hands of this. There was at least one person that did that. But everyone else is like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, what's wrong? What's going on here? We're, we're going to make a ton of money. Because they, they know the type of people that they're going to download, Elite Squad, or at least the marketing team's thinking, and yet I'm going to get a little political here, are the type of alt-right smartphone-having people that are like, hell yeah, let's take them down. Absolutely, give me this game. That game is absolutely nothing of what they're advertising. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least with like the art style. Like, Yeah, it, but... It, it's sending a yeah. message. It's gonna get a market, maybe, or the fact that they back down. You know that I guess that's something. To but say. at this point, at uh, this point, like it's you know we live in the era of YouTube and the internet. Like, it's out there. It's done. You can't. You can't okay. undo it. Like it's okay. Yeah, you're not doing the ad buy anymore, and you're not running it actively. But like that message out there. The reactionary the horse is out, out of the reactionary barn yeah so like so <laughs> it, it, in some case like the damage is already done you can't you can't change it yeah so uh, uh and ubisoft has also had you know the, today even today they you know announced a couple of titles and stuff but also basically like half an hour beforehand before this like thing started they're like oh by the way we realize that you know our company's kind of fucked up right now because we have a completely unhealthy workplace for Women and people of color, and that's sorry about that. Sorry, sorry about it. It's just kind of just kind of snuck that out there before, like, hey, Ubisoft, have to look at this. Do, this do, 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 do you accept my heartfelt apology? Do you accept my heartfelt apology? It's just like, yeah, okay, all right, good job, guys. Very cool. <laughs> Scott Pilgrim's back, everybody. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty sure people. that they've had like the like in case of PR emergency release Great Scott Pilgrim, Pilgrim like Pilgrim last. button on like button on his desk, like whatever. Yves Guillemot uh, has had that there for a while and just like well, today is the day. And then Scott Pilgrim happened. Abuse scandal is so bad, so bad, and I'm gonna make a joke that I wouldn't be surprised if, like, this Christmas they're like, okay, Beyond Good and Evil is coming out in two months. It's not done. We're just, just stop, stop looking at us like. Take, take the first sixty percent and just forget, forget about everything. Like, I wanna um, just so everyone, just so everyone is clear about how, like, how hilariously like wacky this is going over uh jeff Keeley of all people replies to the tweet of this video and he's just like come on <laughs> like dude if you know jeff Keeley's roasting you you know you fucked up like, which which video oh like uh, ubisoft's like announcement that they're like the video and then the subsequent announcement that oh this isn't part of the video thing that's happening soon because of time constraints you love uh, to see it, folks. I, I mean, all the it's apologies. Very good. Well, let's, it's not good. I think we've yeah. reached the point in like American uh, corporate culture where like all the apologies that they're going to issue in the world don't mean anything to like the grand public anymore. Just change. Just just do the exactly. thing. Stop the. And the thing is that you, they have to do is like stop abusing your workers. Yeah. So, so I guess it's like no, no. The the thing we're asking you to do is to do less, do do less abuse. If yeah. Do that, then we'll be happier. We as the public. Until then, it's like, <sighs> would that it were so simple? Well, I know. Just the, and also the boys' club that has is at the yeah. top. And don't get me wrong. A lot of companies have like a boys' club culture going on, but uh, I think rock. the fact. I think the fact that Ubisoft are literally like what three of them are brothers or something like that. That's sort of like weird nepotism. Maybe it's not this Maybe they're actually hard workers. Yeah, yeah. Larger conversation. Anyways, good luck to Ubisoft on 
riding the ship. Just l leave it there. Uh, I was about Scott Pilgrim coming out. We can, uh, uh, yeah, Scott Pilgrim. Uh, Ray, you've been playing. Let's, let's jump to our. Uh, we've got some more news we definitely want to talk about tonight. But Ray, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you have been playing lately? Yeah. So, uh, I pull. I picked up and finally got to sit down and play all of Ghost of Tsushima. And by play all of it, I'll get to that here in a moment. Um. It's a PS4 exclusive game. It's great. It's honestly great. If you guys have PS4s, I highly recommend you pick it up and play it. Mm -hmm. um, if you only do the story path of the game, shockingly short. Like, you can beat the entire game if you only do the story missions in about six to eight hours or something like that. Again, like I was saying in our uh, unscripted gaming chat, uh, which you can find on Facebook. Not the chat, but we do have a Facebook. You should go to it, Unscripted Gaming slash Facebook. I was talking about how that did not stop me from putting... Now I put over 60 hours into the game because I decided to finish it up a little bit last night. Well, a couple of things I wanted to clean up and do. Uh, the game is beautiful looking. It takes a real-life event. The... Um, the 1200s Battle of Tsushima, uh, where the Mongol nation invaded, uh, decided to invade Japan. And they didn't just start with a small invasion force. Um, and the game starts off this way. Uh, the island of Tsushima had a garrison of 80 samurai versus, and this is a multiple accounts number, um, 8,000 Mongols <laughs> that stormed their island. That's so, a lot. Um, Lo and behold, uh, the samurai put up a fight. There is an account of one samurai that took on 25 Mongols in single arm combat by himself. Uh, you know, ultimately that, I guess, doesn't matter because they, they lost. Of course they lost. Absolutely they lost. Uh, what, what did you expect uh, from them? They got comboed. Yeah, and uh, the invaders took over the island for a while. But uh, And in the game, you play as Lord Sakai, who is one of the people that is <clears throat> fighting to get the Mongol invaders off the island. And um, it's great. You start off with just samurai tactics. Uh, eventually, you start getting... They never say these words, but it's 100% ninja tactics. How do you think it's... Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. How do you think it stacks up against Sekiro? I guess Sekiro, they're like... They're Sekiro, you're different playing games. a ninja. Yeah. Uh, you're 100% playing a ninja in Sekiro. In this, you're playing a samurai who happens to be forced into the ninja lifestyle because he's out of options. Mm -hmm. But uh, you start throwing kunai, you... um. Okay, there's a lot of things I liked of this game versus Sekiro. Sekiro is a Dark Souls game. This is... This is an open world Assassin's Creed style game, but you're a samurai. You can you can walk up to an enemy fort, and you could do a couple options. You can either sneak around and start like headshotting and picking people off and assassinating them and stabbing them in the neck, or you could walk up to the fort, big samurai pants on, and you hit a button that says stand off, and your guy says come on and fight me, and then some some Mongols line up and you take them on in single combat, and you just start putting them down with like uh time to button pushes now if they if you lose that single combat you're reduced to a sliver of health and the next attack like insta kills you but if you can start just bam 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 and you can play the entire game that way just as an honorable samurai or you could be a sneaky bastard ninja and it feels so good because you're you're so burdened with options and the how to take out mongo I thought you. I thought you were gonna say you were so burdened with honor, and I was like, "Wow, you really did get in this game." Oh my god! No, you're, you're so burdened with options. Like, there's a Mongol sitting over there. Do you use your regular bow and arrow, or do you want to be a ninja and do you want to use your arrow that now shoots explosives? Because fuck them. <laughs> or do you want to go ahead and stand off with a group of Mongols? Not in single combat, but swinging your sword, and you get a bunch of different stances for different type of uh, Mongol combatants. Uh, the different stances do different levels of attack to them, and actually, it's like a, 
Think of it like a Pokemon weakness system. The moon stance beats people that are in sword mode. If someone has a shield, you do the uh, the wind stance, so on and so forth. Or you could just eh, throw a sticky bomb at them, and you throw a sticky bomb on their shield, and the guy freaks out. He's like, oh, no, what did you do? Bam. <laughs> there you go. I love it. I, I love it. Eventually, later on in the game, a little bit of mysticism comes in to where you unlock the ghost mode. And what this mode consists Whoa. of is um, you get you do some things in the game at the halfway point, And you activate this mode after you killed like so many enemies in a row. It's seven enemies in a row. And in ghost mode, you click two buttons together, kind of like God of War Spartan mode. And... All the enemies on screen freeze. They're so in awe at the fact that you're the Ghost of Tsushima name drop. That <laughs> <laughs> they don't attack you. They're just standing frozen in terror. And you get to run up to them and just cut them down in one hit. And uh, that's kind of wild. Like the, depending on the armor that you're wearing, you eventually get an armor that if you start cutting motherfuckers down in one or two hits you have, like, a 30% chance of the enemies running away in terror of you because they're so afraid of all the Mongol killing you've been doing. And don't be sad that you're killing, like, so many thousands of Mongols as you go through this game. The The storytelling in this game makes them cartoonishly evil. And that actually brings me to a complaint I have about this game. I was reading some game reviews just to kind of like after I beat the game just to see what other people thought. And a big complaint I saw from a lot of people is this game is so fucking sad. And after I beat the game and I did all the extra side quests and whatnot, I'm like, yeah, this is like... Like it. It's like too serious. This is one of the most depressing video games I think I've ever played. Because there's like almost no levity to it. There's two instances yeah. of levity in the entire game. The rest of it is all about people suffering and what the Mongols did to them to make them suffer. That's the entire game. You're meant to just hate the Mongols. I feel bad for anyone of Mongolian descent playing this game because they're like, Jesus Christ, guys, calm it the fuck down. We get yeah. it. Shit. So it's, it's almost like it's grim dark, but it seems also kind of one note too, because it's like Mongol bad, but like really bad, but like Not really bad. really bad. It's kind of like kinda... if you're a Warhammer 40k fan, it's like Tyranids bad. Where Tyranids are the only race in Warhammer 40k that's like, no, there is nothing good about this race. Not not a single good thing can be said about them. The universe would be better if they all just died. That's kind of how this game approaches the Mongols. Where the game, like, actively says, like, you know what, genocide might be an option in this case. It's weird! That That is my biggest complaint about this game. There's no, like, split of the stories where you can, like, appreciate the Mongols' side. It's, it's definitely 100% like, nah. We should yeah. kill them all. Noted very chill uh, historical entity, Imperial Japan. <laughs> very, <laughs> very chill, cool people. There's a, there's a certain point where you're just like, you know, you guys Hot. have been the bad guys at points. Meat kettle. <laughs> this isn't that period of the game. The game does bring up... Uh, the game does kind of lean towards like, hey, the Shogunite of Japan in this area... He the, he wasn't a great guy either. You know, the island has done some bad things here and there. They've got kind of kind of a shadowy past, but they didn't deserve nah, this. No, yeah, yeah, they they definitely go into like no, no, oh, the Mongols are the worst. <laughs> they do bad stuff, but with no honor instead of doing bad stuff with 100%, honor. One hundred percent, the game goes there. It goes there several times. They're in the, in the one-third chapter of the game, your character starts doing stuff where a second character says, like, No, we've done bad stuff, but we've done it with honor! That's a first... <laughs> oh, okay. Are you saying you do it for honor? Oh, my God. Oh, my Man, gosh. Man, I gosh. that game. <laughs> most, most people did. <laughs> um, but I, I want to get into good things about the game again. That's, like, my biggest complaint. My biggest complaint is there's no black and white. In, I mean, 
my apologies, the game is way too black and white. There is zero gray. There is Mongols are the bad. Japan, especially the island of Tsushima, very good. Super good. As a matter of fact, the Mongols are just super evil. They, they're like the Nazis of this game. It's so weird. You know how the Nazis are like, yeah, put Nazis in your game. They're irreprehensible. You don't have to do a lot of extra work. To... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, this game goes just out of existence. Way. Gosh, okay. Back to the good things. You could follow a fox. You could pet the fox. If you start... Uh... Uh... If you start praying at fox shrines, you get special charms to increase your attack or buff, but just basically buff your stats and whatnot. Um, we talked about this before the podcast. You can write haiku, and then the haiku you write is attached to the headband that you wear because that's, that's the only reward you get. That's dumb, but that's like the right kind of dumb. I I, I, I dig it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of weird, but I dig it. It's a little dumb, but again, I respect it. Um. It, you you know how you can set a waypoint in most games, and you have this, like, you have map indicators on your screen telling you, yeah, go here. For the waypoints in this game, you have to swipe up on the motion sensor on your PS4 bar, and the wind blows where you're supposed to go, because it's like the old adage, a samurai goes where the wind is blowing. And that's, that never gets old, not that's, gonna lie. That's... Again, very dumb, but also kind of cool. It's so cool, because the particle effects in this game are great and a little bit much. I'm not going to lie, there have been a couple times where the abuse of the particle effects has stopped me from seeing what I'm doing in battle. Because I'm like, oh my god, I can't see you, there's so many cherry blossoms in the way, some of the you're <laughs> just like choking on cherry blossoms has, and just trying to cut down the mongols. Has any of those have any of those particle effects had a negative impact on the performance? You know, has it caused like frame rate dips, or is this game pretty well optimized on the yeah. frame rate dips? Yeah, the, yes, yes. The game runs at 30 frames per second when it wants. When you're in combat and you accidentally activate the win, 15. <laughs> it's slideshow it, time, baby. <laughs> it's not that bad, but yeah, you you feel that. You notice that it happened. Uh, someone said that the game runs at sixty. It does not. Maybe maybe it keeps it up to sixty. Maybe it's at maybe a, on a the right maybe menu. on the PS5. Maybe on something that you can't play yet, but or maybe on the PS4 Pro it runs at sixty in the menu, but then you know. I don't know forty five. I don't have a pro. I don't know what it runs at a pro. I haven't like watched a digital foundry video, but it's a pretty solid 30 for most of the game. But yeah, there there are instances where it gets a little chaotic and it's it's hitting 25 or 20. And if there's way too much going on the screen, I can't it, even I can't even imagine like and and this is also me just being a little spoiled with the with the with the with the chonker I have in here, but like. If it dips below like a hundred, I start to get a little like fussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Only eighty frames. <laughs> like, you're like Idris Elba from from Hot Ones. Like, <laughs> oh shit! Oh yeah. That's another thing. Um, the thing is at like ninety five FPS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, literally unplayable. Um, there's a parry system, much like in Sekiro, Mike. <laughs> Um, but the parry window in this game is weird. Sekiro, for all of my complaints of it running at an unlocked frame rate on the PS4, and unlocked frame rates are not great for games that ask for you to be frame perfect with things, ever. Um, the parry system in here is, I can never 100% get it down, because it's so odd of when you're supposed to attack at different enemies. So I just, mm -hmm. not gonna lie, I ignored it for the most part. You can find a charm later on that, like, increases the parry window. Or you can just put it in easy mode and the parry window is, like, 30 frames or something ridiculous like that. It's like, like a, I don't have to parry if I uh, strike first, you know? That, that's a good strategy. Parrying is not uh, the normal uh, way. Um, I, another complaint. Uh, the game, when you get to a certain story point, you start uh, opening the map. It, like, opens the map and says, you know what, you should liberate Tsushima and go ahead and uh, take out all the Mongol forts. And I did that last night, gentlemen. And guess what you get for it? What's no, that? Just guess. A golden headband. 
You know what? That would have been cool. You get nothing. Oh, okay. What, so we, we get we, an achievement. You do get an achievement. Achievement oh, unlocked. Yeah. Uh, Thumbs up. I was... I'm not going to lie, that was the biggest disappointment I think I had about this game. Because it was... The story is there, and it's still good, and I highly recommend everyone that has a PS4, like, give this game a shot. I think you'll be interested. And it's not long if you do just a critical path. Uh, just a path that's all the way through the story mode of the game. It's really, really cool. The story, I don't want to spoil any of it. It's a really good samurai story. Don't play it in Kurosawa mode. You're robbing yourself of the beautiful colors and scenery in this game. Yeah. I so thought that. Gorgeous looking. I think the presence of that mode, I don't. I, I, I haven't played the game. I think the presence of that mode is kind of cringe. A like, it's, it's, very, it's very, like, Western gaze. I think, and I'm just like, ah, come on, just why your team did all this work on this color and and stuff, and it's oh, a marketing it's a, gimmick. It's yeah, exactly. It's just, it's like, come on, this is, this is for like the people on Reddit be like, oh, so cool, oh, this is great. Right, you should I never play the game in that mode. It's, yeah, it seems like a terrible idea. A terrible it is, idea. Uh. If you for accessibility issues, whatever mode you start the game in, the option to drop the game back to easy mode, like it goes from you could go from any difficulty you want, but uh, the option to always just say, you know what, I, I I'm having a lot of trouble. Let's just take it all the way back to easy mode. That option is always there in the menu, but you can't bump it up. Just just be aware of that. So everyone should give this game a shot. It's a game of all skill levels. It's really fun. Really enjoy it. You get to name your horse. That's that's great. You get to pick your horse. You get a white I like picking horses. Oh, you, you do get to pick your horse. Uh, D horse. Uh, the game is doing extremely well sales wise. It sold three million copies yeah. in the first week. It's doing okay. Yeah, sucker punch as the studio is doing all. Yeah, they'll be they'll be all right. They'll be small right. independent. No, no, in small independent studio. Sucker punch. Dude. Oh, and uh. As far as I know, it doesn't have any microtransactions associated with it. You like everything that you can find around is just there in the game, and you could just go get it. And you can customize by you customize your armor colors by going out into the world and picking flowers, and then the I guess the merchant crushes up the flowers to make the colors. I like that. It has a better shader system than Destiny confirmed. I mean, you're, yeah. 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 That's true. Yeah. Well, well cool. that's that's all I have to say about Ghost of Tsushima. I really, really loved it. I I'm not gonna go back and ever play it again. I, I've done everything I could do and or I want to do in that game. Oh, that that's one final thing I wanted to bring up. You're burdened with options in that game. Every time you go to a hot spring. It ticks your health up by 1% off of its base. So if you want to find all 20 hot springs, you actually do get a prize for that. You get to fight naked from now on. <laughs> yes. Fuck out, baby. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Sun's out, guns out. Uh, but there's you can find every fox then, and it keeps giving you micro charms. You could do every side mission. Don't. Please don't. They're not that interesting. The game's great. So, still, I re highly recommend it to both of you. I know you both have PS4s. So try it out. Yes. Um, I uh, I think uh, as far as other games that we've been playing, I know Josh and I have been. Uh, I don't. I think you're probably a little farther than me at this point, but we have been playing a little bit of uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Indeed, one we and have two. one and two. One and two. Ben released yes so mm -hmm. um this week on tuesday i want to say um they did a, re a release of tony hawk's pro skater one and two in a collection together um you know that it, it's kind of a seamless transition to the game uh, each game like they're contained in the same launcher 40 dollars, which is not a bad price for a uh, you know two game remaster um, very faithful in terms of the level design and the goals to the original Tony Hawk's Pro mm. Skater 1 and 2. In to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, they did bring parity to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 by putting 10 goals on each level rather than the original 5. So every um, level has 5 additional goals than it did over the original. But, you know, you're still doing the 
collect skate, collect yeah. the five things around, Secret grind, tape. yeah, grind on certain objects, score, score attack, highest combo, that kind of thing. So, uh, two minute runs, um, you know, it really looks it's, to, to me, it looks like what I remember Tony Hawk's pro skater looking like, you yeah. know, 15 years ago when I was playing the original on my PS one, like they are great looking games. And I, I love the way the skating feels in these two games. Yeah. I, I mean, cause I haven't really played like a ton of, like I haven't played a lot of skating games. I think the last like Tony Hawk game I spent a significant amount of time with was like thug. Mm hmm. I played. I, re I remember being pretty like I remember kind of liking that one. I thought that one was pretty good. Yeah, like... I I played everything up through Thug Two, and then anything after that, pretty much, uh, you know, I didn't have a console. It kind of fallen off of. Yeah. Um, you know, just it was it wasn't in on my radar or the games. You know, the, when the games were coming out, they weren't reviewing really well. So I was like, oh well, you know, I'd rather keep my good memories of the Tony Hawk games alive rather yeah. than play these bad ones and like and and with that like i haven't played one of these in forever but you know i like just did the tutorial tutorial like jumped right in and i felt like i was like oh yeah i'm kind of like you know i'm a little rusty i'm still got to work on you know some of my stuff but like i, I was a really able to just jump right back in and like this is the one of like this is the warehouse oh my god like this is like the level yep. from like the demo disc and stuff like that and uh i mean it's if anything it's like it's like kind of surprising that it, and I don't mean I I don't mean this in a bad, excuse me, in a bad way, but like, what took them so long? Because it's like, like I, again, I don't want to I don't want to mean that like a me or like why didn't they just make it good, like you know dumb take like that. But it's like, it it's just like it really, I think kind of the ele like, the simplicity is like I I really appreciate it because it's like look, what if we just you know, remade these graphics like they look like a, it's a great looking game we just what if we just got the feel right focused on just like the core experience like put in a bunch of cool unlockables um it, it's just like it's just like they kind of just really went back to the basics of like tony hawk as everyone kind of remembers it yeah and i think um yeah like josh says it's like 40 it's... bucks so it's like a great price and it's it's a i'm really enjoying it yeah and like you know, if kind of on that point, it's it both like what took them so long to do this and also what happened with that original Tony Hawk HD remake and then Tony Hawk 5 that made those games so bad. Like, yeah, what what changed? I mean, I'm 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 very happy that this this game I'm going to call it this game because on it like, yes, it's two games, but, it, but you know, it's in the same package. It's, it's one, one game. Package, yeah. Um, like this game is so good and you know it, it the skating feels good i like the fact that they decided to make all the like original characters that they brought over like their current age so it's like 2020 tony hawk not yeah you know 1998 tony hawk which is hilarious but they brought you know they bring in some new skaters i think the um the character stat stuff the way they're doing that some of the unlockables and challenges while they could do a little better job of like helping you keep track of those challenges yeah while you're doing them in game uh besides the, the just like the five the 10 objectives like i th still think that that adds a a good kind of like a good like meta game too. yeah it, it's, it's a good nice. thing to do and go back to to experience getting the stat points with the other skaters or to just continue to go back even after you've completed a level completely. Um, the multiplayer stuff is pretty fun. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I I want to know what happened to cause a change in such a positive direction. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, you know, because I think Vicarious Visions worked, uh, worked on this. And I know for while Destiny was still part of... Uh, I was still partnered with act or Bungie was still partnered with Activision for destiny stuff. I know Vicarious Visions did a lot of really good stuff for like, like they are the reason basically why destiny two has a PC port. And yeah. uh, I think definitely as, as far as like the PC version of this game, it is a great port um, from my experience. Um, so I think that may, you know, maybe they just had like the right team 
yeah. just really kind of, and again, like I said, I just really appreciate just kind of the, you know, back to basics, real kind of just simple, not simple. I don't mean like unrefined, like it's very like, I just appreciate that. It's, you know, this is just the Tony Hawk game. Go have fun. Go. I, I already like, I kind of tried to make a custom skater. I like, I wish there was like a little bit more options with what you could do there, but kind of settled on the look I like, I, you know, built, built out there, like the, the tricks that they can do. I got some sick clothes for them. Like I, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. And so, um, I hope two things from this, this game, that happened one as I really hope that this gives the studio and the the folks there the leverage and the the power they need to make a Tony Hawk six or, or some other game like that and kind of put that fifth game behind them you know and, and really make a new modern Tony Hawk game with with some additional feature you know what what does a a more modern game look than just a you know a remake of this game um, and also, a hundred Tony Hawks drop out of a plane into Orange County, and fuck Tony. Okay, Tony wait, Hawk Battle Wait, 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 wait. Isn't that just Radical Heights though? But that game, I, I I'm kind of yes. into it. Yeah, might as well. I'm, I'm kind of into it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, 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 and the barrier run. is the barrier is a bunch of cops who are coming to you know be narcs and and like that they're gonna narc on you and then you lost me. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, 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 no. It's just, turn, it's just, it's just the, it's just the, uh, the security guard who drives around the levels, driving exactly. around in a circle, and he gets in a tighter, tighter, tighter circle, and if he hits you, you die. Exactly. And uh... but anyway, the other thing is, I, I do hope that there's an opportunity for them, um, and the, the folks at John Bomb kind of put this in my head, and I'm like, no, this has to happen now, of them doing like Tony Hawk, three and four. Thug one and two, and like making this a a platform for kind of the HD real re realization of those games, bringing those in. So then you know, let's say you're playing, you know, original Tony Hawk m multiplayer. You have six games in the hopper that you can pick levels and and, and it, information from. I think yeah. that'd be pretty cool. I mean, even if they, even if they, they just like bring in the levels, I mean, that yeah. would really be. That's pretty much all that anyone would really need. Yeah, I mean, you know, a remake of like Tony Hawk Underground. Like, I say no. You're probably. Let me right. think about that. Yeah. Especially Thug fifteen year old me really wants Bam Margera back, weird. though. I I oh, hate to God. say it. But 15-year-old me, who was reading CSS or CCS, whatever the fuck that magazine was well, all the time, really wants Bam Margera back, so. Just the, you could feel like the closet, you know, where your DC shoes are, you haven't opened, put them on in 10 years, are calling to you. I mean, I may or may not have today been looking at both Osiris shoes, oh skate God. decks for me and my oldest daughter, so... You just want to just you just want to go to a White Castle and get a crave case and then throw a bunch of sandwiches at Bam Margera's dad, and you know that's just it, you, you you just, just described the perfect. It just evening. calls to you. It's calling. <laughs> to you. you can hear it, feel it. It really does. It really does. It's surface of your mind. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna teach my daughter to skateboard, and I you know what? It's one of those things that every time I play this game, I go, I could probably still do a kickflip, right? I haven't done one in 20 years. I could probably still do it. Well, it's okay. okay. You know, I never really skateboarded, you know, a lot when I was a kid. And I have one now, and I'm kind of learning. So, not great. But I can go from point A to point B without dying. So, that's cool. It's something. It's it's fun. It's cool. Um, so, yeah. I think we've been really... We've been enjoying that. Uh, we've been dipping into Warzone just a little bit. No, it's not like a super new game, but... Uh, Warzone fun. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Mike and I have been talking about doing, uh, recording some video of our. Yeah, so stay tuned. Our shenanigans. So maybe after we hop off this recording, we can do a little little video test out there. But uh, yeah, you know, the, I think the the Warzone formula that Call of Duty has for the battle royale, I, I think they have iterated on it in an interesting way kind yeah. of doing things slightly different than your Fortnite and your 
PUBG with the um with like the contracts that you can get that give you like intel on where the next circle is going to be or like will give you a player location um being able to like collect money and buy kill streak rewards dropping in loadout like dropping in the ability to grab one of your standard loadouts so like you could have one of your loadouts be a pretty sick um Warzone loadout and then get that on the map or the fact that if you die you go to the gulag and you have an opportunity to fight your way back onto the battlefield for uh you know a period of time um up until kind of the last few circles so they're they they've done enough with it so it's not just like oh call of duty has uh you know a, a game mode like this because you have to if you have a shooter. Yeah. Like, they've actually done stuff to it to make it interesting and compelling and feel different than the other Battle Royales on the market. Um, yeah, and, and I think I even remember probably saying on this on this very podcast uh, that kind of what I had always wanted from... Like, I appreciated PUBG, but I didn't particularly enjoy playing it just because it was, it was very early and it's, you know... No buggy. Hey, it was very early in its life and was very buggy, like you said. So I was really kind of waiting for like the uh, like the uh, battle royale kind of experience, just a little bit more polish. And Warzone just kind of fits that pretty much to a T. So just yeah. by that kind of virtue alone, I've just been really enjoying it. So well, you mean you like, you tell me you tell me like oh, you're going to have a Call of Duty game and they're going to have to worry about, like, draw distances beyond, like, two feet away from you. You're like, they can't pull that shit off. But no, I mean, the map is massive. It's interesting. The, you know, the 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 work they've done with the engine and, and that game, it runs well. Like, it, it, does, it feels like a Call of Duty, but is completely outside of what, you know, some, somebody who thinks of, like, your typical Call of Duty from five years ago is like uh, there, yeah. there's no way that that team could pull something like that off but they absolutely do yeah it's yeah so like josh said stay tuned we might be uh doing some video shenanigans with that so i got second place last night oh. on a solo i was so close and we we had that team game where like i was two hundred dollars short of buying josh back in and we were like what were the we top like three the squads i think top, top four three squads like that like, like god it was like the last circle too so oh I, I didn't realize this too the interesting thing is the last the very last circle well so it'll the gas will close down to a very very small area and then the safe circle moves into the gas and then the gas cloud moves to that area so it's a very interesting oh. kind of very last dynamic of like how the, oh. the, the you have to shift your spacing a little bit. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I like that. That's so a you good. Can't, little, you can't like, just like uh, be posted up somewhere hiding in that last circle because like, likely what's going to happen, it, like... it's gonna the gas is gonna overtake you because it's gonna move. That's pretty clever. Yeah. Oh, huh. Well, well, like I said, uh, stay tuned for possibly some video stuff on that coming soon. Uh, and before we go uh, too long here, folks, I think we should hit on some of this news because there's news this week. Yeah, which is it's basically like Josh's tech minute, but like all of the news. Yeah. Um, so do we want to, I guess, oh, like, I think Ray's trying to say something, but his microphone is not functioning properly. No, not no, at all. I cannot hear you. There you go. Yes. Now I can hear you. Uh, I want to talk with you guys about that thing Nintendo did with that Mario game. Oh my that... god. I guess I want to get that out of the way. We should do that first. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we'll, we'll talk about the non the non hardware news first before we get into like Josh's tech minute news. It's cute, you think it'll be a minute. A <laughs> uh... <laughs> minute. Yeah. Josh's um, tech minute. So Nintendo had a really cool direct celebrating Mario's uh, 35th anniversary. By the way, reminder: they did fuck all for Samus's 34th anniversary. <sighs> Mario moves titles. Samus is not. I'm sorry. Ooh, it's it hurts because it's true. Ah, yeah, anyway, like that's why I'm not crying myself to sleep about the. It's F-Zero. okay, baby. Don't worry. They don't. They don't hear. 
They, you, what you is that? It's a, it's a it's Metroid. A, it's a baby Metroid. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, until you get the baby Metroid amiibo, I'm not sure you're a fan or not. I don't know. Jury is still out. Uh, hold on one sec. Hi. Oh, look at that. Oh. Podcast interruption. Right. You'll love to see it, folks. Tenderness. So, Nintendo's Direct celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary was saying, Hey, Mario's 35 years old, so as a thank you, we're going to release a bunch of Mario games on the Switch software, which the the, the Switch, is, the Nintendo's internet is, it's a thing. Um, we're also going to release uh, one of the coolest Mario games I've heard in a long time. What's it called? The 35th anniversary game? Or Mario 35. Mario 35, where it's... Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy oh, no. in one cart. It's it's uh it's super super 3D Super Mario All Stars or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's the, the 3D All Stars. The okay. Mario 35 one was like the Battle Royale one, which also sounds kind of cool. Right. So for those two titles, they're only available for six months until like, March 31st. Yeah, and they start selling it in two weeks. Uh, this is September 10th when we're recording this. And that is... God, that's so shitty. That's very weird. No, like... I know why they're doing it. It's like, oh man, you don't want to miss out. You better go... Mike, we know you want to play Super Mario Sunshine. This is your I chance do, to I buy not... it on No, do not $60, slander me as a Mike. Sunshine fan. No, no. <laughs> we know you no, love that Sunshine. No, I don't. No, don't. How dare you? Oh, this you want blood. You this want blood the... so I do bad. not want blood. No, this is defaming. When you, when you, oh, you my, lawyer, missed, my lawyer, Josh, is going to find it. You'll hear from him about this. You have missed making Yoshi spit out juice for wah, wah, decades. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> Yoshi can't swim. He turns into bubbles when you hit the water. You missed that. That, and that, that fucked me up when I was a kid. You, you missed the squid racing. No. Okay, yo, I was actually pretty good at that squid racing because I knew how to, like... <laughs> Had cut corners on some of those. So, I don't really have any affinity for any of these games. I did not okay. play I did not play Mario 64 on the 64. I did not play Mario 64 until it was on the DS and I never finished it. I to never To be honest, the DS version is the better version. Like yeah. if you can only play one version, that's it. I've never played Super Mario Sunshine and I like kind of started Super Mario Galaxy, but I never finished it. So like I the, think if you well, okay, uh, so <laughs> if if there was some actual work done to these games, some quality of life improvements, some uprising. I mean, I think the only thing they've done to Super Mario sixty four is like change the aspect ratio. They've done yeah. nothing to Sunshine and basically nothing to Galaxy, including making you still use motion controls. Essentially, like they've. Yes, you still have to like you have to detach the Joy-Cons and use motion controls for Super Mario Galaxy. Yes, I'm serious. Yeah. Like they've not That's only crazy, are they going yeah. to charge you sixty dollars for this game and make it limited release, not only in physical but in digital copy, but they're also going to be insulting and not do any actual work to the games and just say, "Here, piggies, take your slot." Like it's My nostalgia. It's nostalgia time rush because it's a limited time release like like it, it's kind of wild how i mean and i've heard like I, you know i mean i kind of respect like you know having these like kind of historical things but on the other hand we just got done talking about how great of a remake tony hawk like tony hawk is yeah so to and how much work went into that and how, how great it is and then to see nintendo just kind of basically like Hey, you can play this on your plaza screen now, but like also we didn't do anything to it would, the controls. It would on be this. a lot of work, but like imagine it's... how good Mario sixty four would look if it was drawn like Super Mario Odyssey. Like that game would be and, phenomenal. Yeah. But but it not just, even that, but just like wait. Galaxy, just like give me like a let me play with a pro controller. What? I haven't That's got the point of this. Yeah. Okay, the, the Mario Galaxy, like, forcing you to still use motion controls things, that's indefensible. That's wild to me. That, that, that is just bad. Oh, holy shit, that's bad. 
Um, but I, of course, someone like me that appreciates. I don't know if maybe the only one talking here that appreciates like older style of retro games. I actually want the one to one Mario 64 warts and all experience because yeah. that's that's the way people. Experience I honestly think style. like sixty like the if 64 you want, style holds up okay. If you want to if you want to do that, then download a fucking emulator and play it that way. Like, wait, stop! You can't what you can't shit talk Nintendo of never giving you a legal option, and then they give you the legal option. You're like, but they no, did, but they didn't. I don't because, want no, that no, 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 because they didn't because they didn't release it on its own. They didn't just say like, oh, you can go buy Mario sixty four for twenty dollars. You have to go buy three games at a full fat sixty dollars. Like that's not. That's not an oh, inconsequential. Oh, and by the way, you got to you've got to rush to do it during a pandemic where millions of people are out of jobs. Like, I'm not talking about the sixty dollar price point, but you have had, and this is me like shit talking emulators for just a second. You have had decades of different systems that I know you own to buy <laughs> Mario sixty four <laughs> on the Nintendo eShop. I, for I'm I'm not dollar. I'm not talking about me specifically. I'm talking about the royal we, like a, a hypothetical me that didn't like give up on Super Mario sixty four <laughs> on the DS because I was bored as fuck. Like <laughs> like somebody who actually cares and was like, man, I'd love to play Super Mario sixty four, and like, oh, that sucks. Like it's. This this product is not for me, and you know I've heard some people speculate like there was a there was a time where Nintendo was planning on you know doing an upres and doing some work to these games to release it, but COVID got in the way, and I'm like no 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 no, COVID's no, only been around no, for six no. months. These decisions were made long ago. Yeah. Nintendo planned to fuck you a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I like think it would be. I guess we'll, well as we maybe we gave me as we. I mean, I kind of like the, uh, like, I definitely can kind of ap appreciate, like, the more just kind of original, like, I, I think there's there's obviously room for both of these things, um, but I, I al I'm i also a sucker for, like, some more, you know, give me some, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, give me some, that, like, you know, kind of build out the package that way, like, that would be cool. I don't know if that's in there, but I feel like that would be... If you're gonna do like something pretty th like this, where they're basically just upresing it to work on a a standard TV, I'd hope that they have some, you know, kind of feature, you know, just some better feature and kind of stuff like around the periphery of that, just to make it a more modern experience. I yeah. guess like that would be that. I feel like is, but if this... it's kind of more of an like you know, if it's part of like the All Star brand, that's kind of something I would. I would think would be cool and would help make it less sucky. Yeah, and it just it just goes to show that at the end of the day, Nintendo doesn't care about being being modern and really about their customers all that much. Like because if if Nintendo is paying attention, they would know that their classic console releases from a few years ago when they talked about the limited supply, all that did was drive scalpers to go and buy them so that the people who legitimately wanted them never paid retail price for those boxes. Now, thankfully there is a digital option for this, but like still, you have people who have bandwidth caps, you have people who don't have great internet. You might have people who don't have internet at all who are gonna struggle to find this physical copy of the game because you already have people out there on the internet selling pre-orders for this game. And I'm sure you're gonna have a time where like people are selling switches with you know 3D All-Stars on it. Like it's yeah. just, it's, it is, like anti-customer it is anti-consumer and it like in 2020 nintendo is literally indefensible in doing this yeah like there is no reason for it like the this is an incredibly generous assumption i'm going to make here but i think the only reason this would be like slightly like remotely acceptable is if they're like is if they were noted that on the same day that they announced this, that, which, you know, we're obviously it's already too late, that after this initial period, 
that's when you'll be able to buy them individually for twenty dollars. So like, you yeah, can get they made, Super they Mario broke 64, the collection like, up. Mario sixty four for like twenty bucks. You can get Sunshine on Switch for twenty bucks. You can get Mario Galaxy for twenty bucks. Like, if they had announced yeah. that at the same time that they announced that that they like that'd be okay. Just, like you can like, get that you, would make you know that, it'll, would, that would be the only way that this limited time sale thing would be like acceptable in any way but so and they didn't do that so therefore yeah this because, is really weird because why, one why, that would mean fuck? that nintendo would have to admit like oh yeah we can emulate old you, you, we can put old games on the eShop and like make the virtual console again we just are choosing not to because fuck you and two it is absolutely unreal that i can still to this day go to walmart and pick up mario rabbit's kingdom battle but like in six months i'm Probably in four months, I'm not going to be able to go to a store and find 3D All-Stars. Also, one more thing. The fact that they use the All-Stars branding when the original Super Mario All-Stars was like, okay, we're going to take all these classic games, we're going to up them, we're going to make them look like a Super Nintendo game, and then we're going to release them on this platform. Like, they're using the All-Stars designation without doing the All-Stars thing. So, like... They're stupid so much. Like, the yeah. All-Stars cart for the Super Nintendo, it added save functions in between level save functions it changed different levels besides just up the graphics this one it's i'm on the website right now for it it's bragging it's like we have improved resolution for the three games what that means is they've got it so it runs at a 16 by 9 ratio they haven't yeah. upscaled it it just <clears throat> it, it just won't look like complete horse crap on your new tp yeah. oh, oh, oh. and 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 it comes with a soundtrack. Oh, I know. Okay, I'm back on board. Oh, ah, shit. Damn, damn it. That's actually it. Those are the only two features they brag about. They're like, we improved this runs at 16 by 9, and we have a, uh, a sound test feature. Which, um... Okay, Sonic Adventure came with a sound test feature, and they didn't brag about that in the back of the box. Learn. That is such a weird thing to before! It's very <laughs> Nintendo. Did and I mean that in a very bad way. Sonic the Hedgehog 1 on the Sega Genesis came with a sound test feature. Dude, you make a whole webpage where you brag about each game coming with a sound test. God, that's so bad. Oh my gosh. Like, also, you could you just buy the soundtracks. I don't know. I, yeah. uh, one so, thing I, what I thought was exciting was the announcement that they're bringing 3D World uh to the switch yeah which is a super duper slept on wii u mario game and i think if you have not played it god it, that game is such a delight um that soundtrack is a mario all-timer it's oh, so that's the, good that's the one with the cat suits right yes mm -hmm. yeah that game is like really really easy if you play single player, oh, if you yeah. play a four player, it's like the hardest goddamn Mario game you've ever played in your life. Oh yeah, but, but because I'm convinced it it was tuned for two players, it was not tuned for four players. Fuck yeah. any Mario game where you're bouncing on top of each other, like. But yeah, oh like God. I am, and it seems like they've got some like new content coming for that too. Yeah, the uh, the so... Bowser, Bowser's Fury. Kind yes, of like, so seemed like like a little expansion I, uh, they're adding to again, it. Again, like I cannot recommend this game enough. If especially if you never played it, like I'm gonna get this again, even though I have it on the Wii U. February twelfth. So I again, I highly, highly recommend this one. I, I there are so many people who have just you know who did not who because they didn't own a Wii U because that's entirely understandable why you wouldn't own a Wii U. Who did not play this game and absolutely owe it to themselves to do so. I, I totally have a Wii U. It's sitting in my closet up there. Yep, mine's uh under the couch here. Y yeah. You know what's sad about the Wii U? It's everyone's Wii U is exactly where it deserves to be. Away yeah. from sight. As soon as Mario as soon as Mario Kart 8 came out on the Switch, I was like Oh, well, what's Nintendo wised up oh, and they're just like, yeah, we're, we're just dumping Wii U games onto the Switch. We we all know you slept on that console. It's like, it's a wrap. Yeah. In you go, into the box you go. <laughs> um, there's only one There's only one reason to keep out a Wii U if you have one, and that is the original Super Mario Maker. Yeah. Because you get the tablet. Uh, that, well, nice. the, yeah. part, part 2 is a 
worthy enough replacement on the Switch. But there's something about having the the tablet TV at the same time that can't. Okay. Yeah, you know, it just yeah. the yeah. the Switch version does not quite match. Um, a few other kind of smaller announcements from. Um, that the Mario 35, um, they are releasing a Super Mario Brothers themed Game & Watch. Um, the Super Mario All-Stars is coming to the classic SNES um, for Switch Online customers. Um, then there was the, we kind of touched on this a little bit, the Super Mario Bros. 35, which looks really cool. It's kind of like Tetris 99, but with Super Mario World, like you're playing Super Mario World against 35 people, you're sending junk to each other trying to mess with each other. It's great. Don't fall in love with it, though, because it's also going away on March 31st. Why? What is the point of limited well, six-month support period? I got two this? answers for you right here. Yeah, so Bang, boom. This goes back to what you were saying, Josh. This sort of weird FOMO marketing, it makes me, like, I'm not going to lie to you guys. When... During the Nintendo Direct, once uh, Nintendo announced that it was limited time release, I went to Amazon and it was in my cart. And then I thought, I saw the thing where it says, uh, up until March 21st. And you know what? I just looked at that and said, man, fuck them. And I, like, took yeah. that shit out of my cart. And I'm like, I'm not feeding into this. No. No. I'm not doing it. That's not to down, to down speak either of you if you want to do it. I'm just like... Man, I already played all three of these games, and I didn't beat Mario Sunshine. And yeah. I mean, if they, if they, you yeah. know, again, if if they had done some actual work to them, it could be a compelling game for me. But just to be like, here are three re-releases of games you weren't particularly interested in anyway. Like, it just it's not it's not for me, and I'm not going to do it. And I'm also not going to support that business decision either. Like. I'm not going to fight to try and get a copy. I'm not going to download a copy that they're not going to, you know, keep selling or support, like, you know. But, um, and then the last thing, because, um, you know, don't want to spend too much time on something we can't fall in love with, was the Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, um, which is a physical Mario Kart that you put some markers down and kind of do, like, an AR RC car game through your living room or wherever. Um, yeah, the problem is each car is a hundred dollars. I still got a lot of it. Labo again. Hey, Mike, remember when you said Labo wasn't going to be a dumpster fire? No. Searching memory. I don't. Searching memory. <laughs> Pull like receipts. No, I don't think I will. <laughs> yeah, no. looks cool. Looks neat. Was, seems like it might be too expensive. I really want to know how fast those carts actually go because that would be very, you know... I, I want to know how durable they actually are and how fast gonna, they actually go. I'm going to short home my uh, home circuit Hell Mario Kart yeah, and make go like 20 miles an hour. <laughs> Wee! I'll definitely get more support than this uh, Mario game that we're talking about. It'll somehow still be still around. <laughs> Six months from now. Yeah, six months is not a long time. You know, it's not. especially during a fucking global pandemic. My God, it is so tone deaf. I just don't understand it. Um, but should we should we get to the uh, should, should we get to the real meat and potatoes uh, hardware news here? Yes, Why please. don't we? All right. So we, do we do we do we start with the the Xbox or do we start with uh do we start with Nvidia? Xbox. Xbox. Let's see the Xbox. So, um, I want to say it was Sunday, Sunday night around like nine o'clock Pacific time. Um, there, there were some, there were some leaks about the Xbox Series S's official existence and Xbox Series X's you, existence right? and pricing. Yeah, I agree. Um, to which Microsoft responded with a meme and then said, okay, well, we're just going to announce it. And then they announced and showed pictures of the Xbox Series S along with the pricing of $299. Now, the Xbox Series S at $299 has a, uh, the same 3.6 gigahertz processor as the Xbox Series X, um, slightly less graphics performance, um, no disk drive, and a 500 
500 gigabyte hard drive rather than the one terabyte. Then a few days later, Xbox says, you know what? Okay, also, by the way, the Xbox Series X, $499. And released that information. Um, and actually, like yesterday and today, YouTubers now are even doing unboxings of the actual boxes showing the size comparison of the two. And, and boy, howdy, that Xbox Series S is small it's small it looks it's a nice little piece of like equipment like even compared because i saw a comparison of it to a ps4 and it's it's nice like it's like just the yeah like it's a really good sized i i like i appreciate the terrifying monolith of the xbox series x like i kind of love the just the just the you know this is what you want yeah we know that you just want a big black monolith to yep. just worship and game at um but i like the i like the very sleek white box too it looks it's it's, it's very yeah nice it looks it's it's it looks they both look super clean um i did forget to mention the xbox series s will do 1440p uh gaming at 100 up to 120 uh frames per second but it will still do 4k um, video and media playing. So it is 4K capable, but not for um, the actual games themselves, whereas yeah. the um, the Xbox Series X will do 4K, um, which, I mean, you know, at so, $399, I, I, I think that is perfectly adequate. Um, you know, I don't know that anybody was really thinking that the, the two boxes would be quite that low, especially the Series S. Um and then you know they they mentioned this a while ago, but the, the X, isn't it? what's that? It's four ninety nine for the X, isn't it? Yeah, four ninety nine, four ninety nine. Um, but so you also um, they launched this with the Xbox One, but they're continuing it on into the um, the new Xbox Series lineup with the um, I forget what it's called, uh, but they have a basically a, a system where you can pay 25 bucks a month or 35 bucks a month respectively for two years to get an Xbox Series S or an Xbox Series X with Game Pass. So, um, it, you know, incredibly affordable monthly payments if, you know, you, you can't put together the money to pay for those things, you know, especially with the value of Game Pass also now and announcing that they're going to include EA Play in Game Pass as well. Like the 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 value proposition for getting into the Xbox ecosystem, you know, is they're making a very very compelling argument, uh, both from a pricing, performance, and content standpoint, um, to say like, hey, it's it's safe to early adopt. Like, you know, normally the early adopters are going to spend hundreds of dollars. They're not going to have a lot of content, either old or new. So hang out for a few years. But like, oh, hey, here's a box that is reasonably priced. You're going to have a lot of games to put on it. You'll have a couple first party, you know, titles that will look great on it right away. And there will continue to be more games as time goes on. So like, jump in now. The water's fine. Right now, as opposed to signing up for the PS5's weird-ass lottery system. Yeah. Yeah, actually, let me try to do that right now. We're doing this live. Xbox Series X pre-order. By the way, I hate that name. Still hate the name. All, Xbox All Access. That was the, the name of the program where you can um, do installments. But And they, they can... Now, if you were in the All Access program, you can actually upgrade to a series x or s as well um so yeah and still we haven't heard anything from sony in terms of the pricing for either of their uh versions of their consoles so september 22nd and no they're not doing a stupid ass lottery system yeah i'm a little pissed about that Nothing makes me angrier than a company saying, play our lottery so you have the ability 
to buy our console. Ooh, 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 ooh. Which Bang for it. Yeah, and it seems it seems really odd given the fact that they even announced that they were doubling their order yeah. for the launch window. So like pre order for a price you don't even know. They're like beg for the ability to have the thoughts of aspirations of now, being able now to I can't remember this. is this the the pre-order is directly through Sony isn't it it's not through like a, a retailer yeah it's yeah. directly through Sony and you have to pre you you sign up with your PlayStation username account and then they will look through that and then determine if you're able via your username to go into the lottery so that you could sign up to pre-order the console of a price you don't even know God, that's so late stage capitalist i can't stand mm. it they, someone didn't even... plan them the order 1884 huh you know how they oh, how they said like you. how they said like oh you're getting the opportunity to pre-order the disk drive version the diskless version no. either one no. like you know it's just you're just the ability to pre-order. I mean, obviously... Can not... you fucking imagine if someone did this with, like, a car? No. My God! It's like... I don't I don't yes, want to call in... I don't, do I'm not counting time. chickens before they hatch, or... Um, you know, things, things can get wacky, but, like, I just feel like... Microsoft has learned a lot of lessons from the Xbox One launch... And Sony is resting on their laurels too much, and I like I feel like they're gonna switch places again. Like, I feel like this cycle is gonna be dominated by Microsoft, and Sony's gonna slip to you know being the the subpar experience again. Yeah, I mean, I think you, uh, I was gonna ask if you we had already covered this, but uh, Josh is our tech a guru here. Do you so? How do you feel like the S? Because Based on my impression, I feel like the S is a pretty solid, like, it's pretty solid bang for your buck. And I want, how do you guys feel about yeah, that? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, the, both Xboxes are made with the same processor. Um, sl the Xbox Series S has slightly less um, graphic capabilities i want to say it's like 10 teraflops versus 14 teraflops or something like that um, but it's based on the same rdna2 um amd architectures it, you know it's got ray tracing support um you know people say like oh you know you can get a 300 dollars graphics card but like that doesn't take into consideration like yes you can spend 300 dollars on a graphics card that will be about the same performance but like you have to spend a lot more on more computer around that like you're not yeah. you know if you it's... don't have a you know high-end processor ram motherboard case like you know it's it's more than a 300 yeah you can like, stick that graphics card in your toaster i guess like, yeah I yeah I, don't know how to do it. Like, I i think a 512 uh, you know a, a 512 gigabyte hard drive is a little that, small in my opinion that's steep. that's, that's tough. i will say the fact that you know i do understand from the 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 way that they are doing this new fast memory you know, there's a now. I will say, Xbox has announced that they will be selling um, upgrade cards that kind of slot in the back. And I, I was looking at the videos, and you can see both of them. You know, they look like PS2 era memory card slots. You just plunk them in. Uh huh. That's so weird. <laughs> but um, you know, that's good. I'm. I don't know that they've announced pricing on those. I imagine they won't be cheap. Um, especially because they're proprietary, but cheaper or more expensive than Joy-Con. Bucks for a terabyte. I am going. Okay, my guess is that a one terabyte memory card to upgrade an Xbox will be a hundred and twenty-five to one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I think. I, think I mean, Josh your standard. Is, I think, unfortunately, I think Josh is right. Your, your standard right now. Even with the prices going down, an M.2 one terabyte hard drive is around a hundred dollars, closer to one hundred and twenty. And say for a Microsoft proprietary uh, one terabyte SSD card that you can only use with <clears throat> Microsoft consoles, <clears throat> I'm gonna say it's gonna be like 80, 70 bucks. And that's only because, you know what? Microsoft's going to sell them at a huge fucking loss. Because everything they're doing with this uh, console generation is at a loss. 
everything. Why not sell the memory cards? To the list? Okay, you know, yeah. Well, let's. I'm. We'll see. If if they sell them for eighty bucks, that's pretty good. I'd be okay with that. Like, I would be very. Well, you're, I you're, guess you're hard it's Microsoft find... and not Nintendo. If it was an Nintendo, if it was a Nintendo terabyte heart, mother. Well, that's the most cursed thing I've ever said in my entire life. Nintendo terabyte hard drive. Jesus Christ. I don't want to think about that. Uh uh-uh, uh, no. Delete, delete, delete. Cut this recording. Mike, why they would never sell that anyway because you don't need more than thirty two gigabytes. Yeah, the switch only came with thirty two gigs. Yeah, but then no, they would have to pay seventy five bucks for the eight gigabyte hard drive. Um, that's how they get you. But you know, reminder. Reminder to everyone: the Nintendo Switch dock still sells for eighty bucks. Don't yeah. ask. No, I'm sorry, ninety. Oh fuck! It's still ninety dollars for Nintendo yeah. Switch dock. Hell um, yeah. But yeah, Mike, to, to to answer your question, I think that the especially the Series S is an incredible value. I honestly think the Xbox Series X is a pretty damn good value too at that price point. Um, I think that they're going to be pretty pretty powerful machines. Um, you know. Obviously, we're going to get into some of the NVIDIA news. Like, it's not going to keep up with the 3080. Yeah, I mean, but it never like, will. But... And, and consoles rarely do. But, like, it is still yeah. a very, very capable machine and will be good for a good long while. Um, you know, especially kind of where TV technology is. Like, you know, they're not going to get outpaced anytime soon. Um, yeah. To where people are going to be like, God, this generation and was unnecessary. I guess just fo- probably with, like, final thing before we hit the... Uh... Nvidia stuff real quick. Um, what were our final PS5? Because I I have a feeling we're gonna be getting. We're not. We can't be too far away from a PS5 just price announcement at this point. So, I'm gonna go ahead and say that the, the disc PS5 is the same price as the X, so 4.99, and the disc less PS5 is gonna be like. Fifty bucks cheaper. Is gonna be like either four. 430, 4, 4, 439? I think 449. Or 440. I like 449. That's pretty good. I think I made my prediction like a couple months ago where I said like we're not going to see the price of a PS5 and Xbox One until like one month before they come out. Obviously Microsoft surprised me on that one so I was wrong on that. I still might not be wrong on the PS5 one. They could sit on it for one more month. Why not? Yeah, well, uh, I I think I think Microsoft finally said like, okay, we can't get beat on price, and like we're just gonna we're just gonna get out there. It, it, they kind of have nothing to lose. Like they've got this amazing ecosystem play, and they're gonna they might as well be like, okay, here it is. Like you got your you got yeah, the most powerful console like, ever, and then you got your I mean, really good media box right here. Because like, if based on what we know is going into the Xbox. Like I don't, I can't remember if we know a lot of the specific guts of the PS5, but I would, I feel Very like at similar. this point, you, I feel like at this point it would be really like, it would be kind of insane if the PS5 came in at like three ninety nine or something. Like, it would kind of be like witchcraft. Like, can you imagine? Like I can imagine it, but I just, it, it would be so, it would be so like what in the like how the how would that be possible especially like i was kind of talking about this in our group chat like i think it was just you know announced pretty recently that like playstation is the most is the kind of biggest money maker for sony right now so to it would be kind of you know it's like oh they could sell at a loss to like uh cut out microsoft like yeah but they would have to do that for like 10 years at their most from their most profitable and like financially solvent division of their entire company, which is not something that companies that are smart do is they try not to do stupid things like that. So that would be, so I, so like I said, I feel like considering that the performance of these consoles is going to be pretty similar. Like I really don't see I mean, unless Sony is like truly wild, out of pocket here, I really don't see how they go. <laughs> They're just how, like how they fuck them. Two fifty. No, oh, stop. <laughs> you know what? Two forty nine. 
Yeah, no, uh, this is like that very famous time where um, Ray, his name was Ray something. He got on stage and everyone's waiting for them to announce the price of the PlayStation 1. And he gets on stage at E3, adjusts the mic, adjusts his papers, and just says, two ninety nine. And then he walks off stage, and that was the entire presentation for the PlayStation! <laughs> I love it. Imagine if they did that again. Uh... Suhei Yoshida walks on stage, does the exact same thing, and just says, looks dead in the camera, and says, $400. Like, not even $399. He just says $400. Yeah, and well, and, then, and then there's, like, a version of it that is, th- is like, $325, but it comes with, uh, a, a hundred, it comes with, like, a 200 gigabyte copy of Ridge Racer pre-installed, and you can't delete it. <laughs> It's full of ads. It's just oh, yeah. it's filled okay. with ads. <laughs> and they just keep and it keeps just downloading like eighty gig patches for like no reason. Just they're all ads. Just, just, we had to change the color of like two things. <laughs> um, um, Josh, I, I, why don't you hit us with the uh, the tech minute? Okay. Yeah. So the other the other big hardware announcement came it came a few days before that, um, and we finally I got tech minute theme unveiled i I'm, I'm working on something um excellent so we finally got unveiled the geforce ampere lineup from nvidia um the 3070 3080 and 3090 which were already um kind of known so it was confirmed there um a lot of the the leaks and information that had been leading up to this were basically confirmed true. You know, the 3090 being their kind of Titan X replacement, big chunky that thing is big. boy. Their their BF Air GPU um, triple slot it. design. Uh, the 3080 uh, that that very interesting cooling fan. Uh, 3070 a more traditional. Um, style cooling solution uh the 12 pin connector was confirmed um you know the first the first parts of the presentation were um spent talking about some of the enhancements that they had made you know they they talked about some latency reduction um with a nvidia reflex that's going to not only be in um the 3000 series, but actually going all the way back to the 10 series um, to reduce latency in games. And they showed off some of that. Um, They showed some um, interesting kind of uh, broadcasting solutions that are going to be baked into NVIDIA cards. Um, Some kind of like green screening effects without uh, having to have a green screen, a really cool um, vocal, isolation technology where it's like kind of reducing background noise and they use an example of somebody with like a hair dryer uh turning it on and you're not able to hear the hair dryer anymore um and then a machinima um creation tool which you know i, I feel is a pretty small subset but for those people who are into that like it's going to be pretty big Man, to have i remember kind of... watching like gary's mod movies back in the day I feel like God. That's the most embarrassing thing I've ever said on this podcast. Like the, the, this. the the guys who made Red versus Blue probably were like, man, wish we had tools like this. Like, I was just about to say that Red versus Blue is most of my high school. That show's great. Yeah, um, but they, you know, they they talked about some of the enhancements that they've made to to ray tracing. Um, you know, with with the new architecture, the way that they are able to, um, you know, more dynamically render things with ray tracing the way that they're able to reduce the burden on the processing power because they're doing more you know computations at the same time just the the sheer power that the ampere architecture is able to um you know trace those rays um they showed a demonstration with the marbles uh, you know the way that they've been able to enhance that bringing up the resolution from like 720p to 1440 or something like that more dynamic lighting it looks really uh cool then they also talked about the the rtx io um in it's it's very similar i think to what's going on in the playstation and the xbox with the rdna uh, to architecture and, and information where mm-hmm. the GPU is pulling more of the game data directly into the GPU and video memory 
rather than running through the CPU and the system memory and then pulling it through there. Um, so it reduces latency, but it also reduces the burden on the CPU because the CPU doesn't have to worry about any of that computation. It is all getting handled by the GPU. Yeah. Um, I thought it was pretty, like, sorry to interrupt yeah. the quick minute here, but they, uh, I thought it was cool that they announced a patch or like a driver that's coming out for, um, I think a couple of cards here soon that is just, it's like just going to reduce latency in Destiny, Call of Duty, stuff like that. I was just like, that's cool that they, that's pretty sick. I, I thought that was pretty neat. Pretty sweet. Yeah, and you know it's it's really cool that they've they've been working to continually increase how responsive even some of those old cards are because like if if you go and you look at the Steam charts like the 1060 is still the number one graphics card on Steam right now. You know, 10 series cards are I want to say like you don't get a 20 series card for the first like top five graphics cards. So like being able to still support some of that stuff. Um, Plus the the ten the 3080 and the 3090 both use GDDR six X memory, um, so it's even faster than your typical GDDR six. Um, but you know all that aside, like they're they you know it the the performance is something that they hammered on a lot. You know I think the 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 1080 Ti was was almost too good of a card, um, and people have been holding on to those for, those for a while, especially because the the Turing 2000 series cards were, while cool and introducing ray tracing, not that much of a performance bump. And when you turned ray tracing on, it actually killed your performance so much it was kind of a hindrance. Um, but you know they claim that the the 3070 has the same performance as a 2080 Ti. Um, the 3080 has almost double the performance and the 3090 is, you know, way out there, right? You could probably pop up one of the, the charts there. Um, but then the, the, the main thing is the pricing. So you may remember the last time, um, we were on this show, you know, I, I'd heard some rumors, um, where the, the pricing was going to fall and, um, the rumors, the rumors were wrong. So... The 3070, which is reportedly faster than a, a 2080 Ti, will actually be retailing for 499. The 3080 for 699, which is up to two times faster than a 2080, and then um, the 3090, which um, was originally thought I wanted to say, I think I saw it was going to be like two thousand um, dollars, 1499. So. <laughs> um God, fourteen ninety nine. That's insane. Jesus, no! I love it. That's amazing. But I mean, I, for, so no that, that okay. So yes, that you know they shut off the thirty ninety doing like eight K sixty FPS gaming. But like a card like that really isn't for gamers. Yes, that's could, yeah. That's for like that is for Pixar movies. Yes, that is for real work and rendering and computation. Like that is why that card has ten thousand teraflops and you know twenty four gigabytes of VRAM. Like that is for serious work. <laughs> that is why that's the only uh, Ampere amazing. card that has SLI support because Nvidia is basically saying like SLI sucks for gaming. You guys don't need it. Like shut up about it. Um, <laughs> but um, but I I'm. In my limited experience with building computers, I've I feel like that perform I feel like that performance on like the particularly the thirty seventy seems like a pretty solid uh, a pretty solid price point for the performance you're getting. Particularly if if you haven't you know if the last card you got was a ten series, I feel like that's pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, I, Jin Sun basically said like. 2080 Ti owners, it's safe to upgrade. Like he literally said that in That's his hilarious. press conference. Like also, he has so oh many specials. Oh. That's when you know you fucking made it. Is when you have like 50 goddamn specials in one bowl. That uh, is a height of excess yeah. I will never achieve. Yes, but I it's mean, a very yeah. beautiful kitchen. But God, you do not need that many specials. You know this. This is a very. You need like three. Okay, okay, a lot of eggs, okay? You know what eggs do to us? We use spatulas for eggs. That's why I have so many. Why? Just use a pork. What? How did 
you they you scramble an egg. egg. Yeah, you scramble the egg with a... Are you putting a fork on your goddamn pan? No, okay, if you're doing it in the pan, you use like a spin, like a wooden spin. That, okay, all right. Uh, don't, dude, uh, okay, all right. D don't. Anyway, this is a very exciting <laughs> launch. Um, we are we are actually only, as of time of recording on the 10th, we are one week away from the launch of the 3080. The, 30, the 3090 comes out end of the month, and then the 3070 is available in October. So, if uh, you, you know that it is... Uh, one last thing I'd like to hit here. Did you guys know it is legal in all 50 states to buy a, one of these graphics cards and mail it to my home to put in my computer? <laughs> all 50 states. Michael Best and Parker, Parker, he Puerto, Puerto Rico. Guam. You can do it, folks. I'm just saying. It can't be you done. know where to find me. Send me a DM. We can talk about it. So... Yeah, I I will write your mother a beautiful thank you note <laughs> if you mail me a graphics card. Uh, yeah, that I do I, not have to pay for. <laughs> That's the it ain't gonna happen. Um, but yeah, Wait, like, before, I, I wanted to expound on that. Imagine someone actually mailed you the like fifteen hundred dollar. What is that? The thirty ninety, Josh. Thirty ninety. Yeah, the fifty. You have to get a new motherboard. Which I'm not sure exists yet to support yeah. that card. Oh well, I definitely, I would definitely need a new power supply. My power supply would not be yeah. strong enough for that bad boy. You basically, someone gives you that card for free, and you're like, okay, so I'm I was out. Like, like, let me just hook it up to the generator out back and just. Like, I'm out eight hundred dollars. Fuel powered computer. <laughs> <laughs> also, you need a new case because I don't know if you, yeah. if you're like me, and you have a full size. I don't know if that'll fit. Okay. So Brief thankfully... sidebar, I like the idea of having a rip cord start for a computer. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I hell. could fit the 3090 in my case, but it would be it would be tight. Josh, I'm looking at your case from here since you've had it in shot the entire time. No, it wouldn't fit. Okay, so I have I have this much I have about this much space between my graphics card and the fans, and I don't need those front fans, so I could pull them out and get about you know. This much extra space, and the 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 5700 XT that I have in there is not a small boy by any means. So, size of a PS4. And he's like, "This is our new graphics car," and I saw them like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> it from me. Um, I literally own game consoles smaller than that GPU. Yeah, but you know it's it's very interesting. Um, the the pricing being lower than what we expected, and the performance being so much more. Um, you know, I I think that the fact that the twenty series did so poorly, um, you know, really kind of got Nvidia to say, okay, we need to be a little more aggressive this time around, both with p putting out more performance, you know, and really making ray tracing a a compelling feature to upgrade for but also the pricing is something that will move consoles because i mean i mean move cards because the, the the 2080 ti was basically the same price as the 3090 not that long ago like you could find 1500 dollars 2080 ti's like um i also think that they're a little worried about what nvidia has to offer like even if nvidia can't i mean I, what amd has to offer even if they can't beat them on raw performance the rdna architecture is not bad rdna 2 is going to be a pretty good leap forward it's what the new consoles are based on so like you know them coming out with 300 hundred dollar cards that may not punch the same weight but like have ray tracing and are still pretty damn good like Nvidia had to do something big, I think, this time to to move stuff. But AMD, as of yesterday, announced the um, I don't know if the if it's their launch dates or their announcement dates. But so Zen three, the the new CPUs from them is has a date of ten eight twenty, and the RDNA two has a date of ten twenty eight twenty. So in October, we're at least going to know what the new CPU and GPUs from AMD are, if not potentially have them. So, um, you know, I think, I think NVIDIA had to kind of swing for the fences on this one to, 
um, you know, really say like, okay, we know that we're kind of in that era of like incremental changes. Well, this isn't an incremental change. This is this is an actual noticeable jump for everybody. Very good. Beautiful tech minute there, Josh. Okay. That was a lot of tech. It's what I do. It's what I do. But you know what? Some say some say it might not be enough tech. Do you know how oh. you can remedy that? How? How can I do that? By going to unscriptedgaming.com oh, or following us on Facebook at Unscripted Gaming Podcast or on Twitter at Unscript underscore gaming. You can get us on YouTube at Unscripted Gaming. You can get us on SoundCloud at uh, soundcloud.com slash unscripted dash gaming. You can get us on Google. You can get us on Apple. You can get us on Stitcher. You can get us everywhere you want to be to get as many tech minutes as you want and then other stuff because that's how you do it with unscripted Beautiful. gaming. Beautiful.